All right, so today we're checking out the homestead. Take a look at the septic, the well, the tractor, the ATV, and we'll give you an update on where we're at so far. homestead today and we are just checking a few things out because we are just getting started on our off-grid earth sheltered house build. Yeah and we wanted to give you a little bit of an update as to where we stand right about now. Because of COVID things are pretty much a waiting game with just about any aspect of building whether it's concrete framing materials so we've been <laughs> finding that out very quickly that we have to just get the ball rolling as soon as possible on anything that we need. It's like hurry up and wait. Yes, get, get in line, <laughs> basically. And as Long Islanders, that's a really tough thing for peep for us, but we're, we're learning. We're but learning to practice patience. That's one of the reasons that we uh, sold our house is because we don't like waiting on lines. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere on Long Island, you're waiting on lines. But up here, it looks like because of COVID, this is what we're going to be doing. But because of that, we've learned that we need to order things early and be prepared. So you see the tractor behind us. We uh, just measured today for, what was it? The piranha tooth blade for the front bucket. That'll help us dig. You want me to help? Can you hold one end? Sure can. Inside? Yeah, to the most inner. This, right there. Yeah. okay, that part that sticks out, right? There's a little lip. Yeah. So that is exactly 58 inches. We ordered the snowblower attachment for the upcoming winter, for next winter, so. Yeah, because they said that the chances of getting that when we want it are slim to none. So, so. we put a deposit on that. And you also ordered the things that we need to get the uh, kit off the a truck. Set, a set of pallet forks also. Because yeah. when the kit gets delivered for the house, we need a way to get that off the truck. And hopefully this tractor can lift it. I'm, I'm yeah. a little worried, but the forks maybe are gonna will be needed. a little bit at a time, maybe. Yeah, the forks will be needed for just about anything we do anyway, so. We put a deposit or a down payment on the blueprints. Yes. And they contacted us, they got the money and the blueprints are being drawn, drawn up. up as we speak. So we're waiting for that. We've been doing a little research on the well. Uh, that's gonna be one of the biggest power suckers on our homestead because we're going solar. I did a little research and we are looking around. So we found a one and a half horsepower well pump that for us might work. It's gonna be able to be submerged up to the 360 feet. It's a soft start and it only draws at any given point 2200 watts max. Which is really good for an off-grid solar system uh, demand for us. So we called our well guy. Yeah, we have a call into him. He's also doing some research and gonna look at all the options and uh, we're waiting for him to get back to us. So we're waiting on that too. So yeah, it is still winter up here in the Adirondacks. It is a beautiful day though, about 36 degrees. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take you around. We'll look at uh, a little tour of the home site and where we're going to be building and the whole homestead in general. So this is our clearing and I'm facing south so the house will be facing south maybe a little bit to the east to get the solar passive solar through the windows on the south side of the house. The garage will be right in this area here and between the garage and the house will be like a carport eventually. Of course we're building the house first. The well, we'll take a walk over to the well and check it out. Oh look at the well is overflowing today. Oh yeah. So the water level rose. So that's yeah. good. So the well is artesian and it's flowing out of the well right now. And we'll just take you on a little tour around the property. So the garage will be right in this area. And yesterday we were here, we're looking at the well and uh, it wasn't overflowing. So bright, my eyes are hurting so bad right now. You wore sunglasses, like me. Yeah. So let's see. No water dripping, huh? Nope. Should be. Yeah. Nothing. That's really weird. Yeah, I always see water coming from this thing. Yeah, it's really, really, really weird. I mean, the level of the water should be so high right now. 
Is it because it was so cold? That's ready. Yeah. Do you need help? Don't lose that little. Oh my God! It's right yeah, there. It's right there. Okay. Good to know. Can yeah, you see it? Yeah, that is good to know. I totally can see Look. it. But today. The level rose another three inches, and that's an artesian well. We have a lot of plans to use the overflow water in the gardens and for the animals. This way, we'll go check out the septic quick. Oh, oh, oh. Snow's deep. Slippery. Oh, you do that too. I was doing that yesterday. It's definitely not easy to walk in. So this is the where the septic tank is. And you can actually see a little bit of an outline of where the actual septic tank is buried below there. And then the leach field is out there, flat area. We'll connect that into the house. But what's really interesting is this is where we want to put the solar panels. So you can see the rocks. We want to put the solar panels behind here. It'll go from that little area over there all over to about here. I think it's going to be about 27 feet wide. And the solar panels are going to go on the back of the woodshed facing south at about a 43 to 45 degree angle, which is optimum for our latitude. And it'll be a wood shed and a storage shed in front of it. So we'll make use of it. You'll come up the driveway. You won't even see the solar panels at all. We'll have wood stored here. It'll look like the front of a small garage, but it won't be. And then you'll have an entrance into the house here. And the solar panels will be slightly in front of the house. We're definitely going to have to take some of these trees out right there, which is okay. Richie is standing at the front of the woodshed right now. Maybe be about 12 feet wide. We're not sure. We'll have to figure the dimensions out when we're ready to build it. And the solar panels will be on the back of it. Going all the way down, they'll be about two feet off the ground because we want them to be accessible so Richie <laughs> can get out there when it snows. <laughs> well, we also plan on uh, you know, storing like a cup, uh, tractor implement under it and that kind of stuff. So we want to make sure it's all accessible and it'll be good. And that's it. It'll be good. And some firewood. And some wood. All right, so that's our clearing. And I'm standing literally in part of the driveway right now because the driveway will come in there, go around and around here, and whoops, right back over there. So big trucks can come in and turn around like when we get propane and other deliveries. We just did some homestead updates today, like we checked the game cams. We yep. realized that there were a few people, uh, I call them looky-loos, <laughs> that wanted to come up. Snowmobiles came up here. One of the things that we love about this property is the snowmobile club trails go right through it. We give them permission every year mm -hmm. and we can't wait to be members. But they're not supposed to go off the trail and a few people did go off the trail and came up and went around our clearing here. Um, we're not upset about that. Nobody touched anything, but they're really not supposed to do that. Right. They're also not supposed to go on the trails when the trails are closed. And they did it when the trails were closed, so that's not a good thing. But I'm sure next year when we're living here, the stuff like that just won't happen anymore. <laughs> so we saw that on the game cams. We also had to check the ATV. Yes, because if you saw the other videos, <laughs> there was some mice living under the seat. <laughs> And three times that we came up here and we, we didn't have time to address it. So we finally got things taken care of. There was a panel under there with some <laughs> Torx uh, screws and we got that out of and there. And we cleaned those little... Mm, I hate the mice. They get into everything. things out. They do. They're such a pain in the neck. We know the mice are living under here. So I think what we'll try and do is uh, maybe we could somehow get this piece to come up and out of here just enough to grab the, the nest and get it out of there. Let's see, the seat comes off like this, nice and easy. 
Would you be able to grab my drill over there? Sure. Okay, so it's a Torx T30. That's the size. We forgot to stop and pick up the rat poison. We did. Okay. Try not to lose those. Nope. Now, let's see if we can... Oh, I know what these are. What are they? These are those little push pins. I don't know if I have the right tool, but... You That's go, a knife. You're going to cut it. You kind of pull these back. Oh. And then you can kind of get under the whole entire thing and pull okay. it out. I'm putting those in my chest pocket. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh. there's the nest. All right, I got gloves. Let me do it. Here, hold the camera. Yeah, okay. I wish I had a mask, though. I don't want to breathe this in. Is there any mice in here? There better not be. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Can you get that out of there? Mm -mm. Oh, I hate them. They get into everything, these mice. Don't breathe that in. Yeah, I'm downwind. I don't want hantavirus. I'm downwind, Kathy. Oh, there is a lot of tubing in here. Mmm, that's not good. All right. Well, let's say what we got. Too bad we didn't have a shop vac or something. No, oh, it's all right. But yeah, there's some stuff you got to look at in here. And, uh, while we were under there, we also looked at a, uh, a coolant leak. It looked like some fluid was leaking out of it. We found it on the floor a couple of times. Right, so... We thought the mice were doing it, but... It, yeah, it's definitely low on antifreeze, so we're going to figure out where it's leaking from and stay tuned for video on that. <laughs> one arm, Kathy, I did it. I don't know if you're going to feel it with your hands. Got There's it two clips. That's it. And that comes off. And we pull that out of the way. This is our coolant level. And? And it looks low, actually. I don't see any coolant in there. Let's move this up and out of the way. Turn this and open it. Yeah. So, might not be able to see it, but the minimum is right down here. Yeah. And the maximum is right there. Yep. And we don't have either right now. We gotta okay. get some. Deep. <laughs> fly around him. He's going nowhere fast. I fell. But that's it. We are just waiting now to hear from the well guy because we want to get that done. Maybe when we come up, you know, the next time we come up, if we can get that done, that'd be great. We're going to need the water for the cement. Well, yeah, that's important. We're going to have to have water, running water up here for the cement trucks when they, when the guys start doing their work, so. So we want to get that done next. We're going to, in the meantime, run it off a generator. So we're going to need to buy another generator, yeah. a bigger one, um, which won't go to waste. Nope. So there's a video Definitely on that coming up. <laughs> that's definitely a sound investment. Another generator up here, for sure. Never enough. Uh, and that's where we're at. We're waiting on the well guy. We're waiting on the blueprints. So we will keep you updated each week. On Sundays, we upload. Other than that, I'm Kathy. And I'm Rich. And we're creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks. Thank you so much for joining us. See you on the next video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>